Today we're going to be doing a sew along to my new pre-fall pattern 8426, which is this really great jumper. The jumper has the ability to be made in different fabrics and even using different textures. Today we're going to do a full sew along, so let's get started. Now if you're new to sewing or you just need a refresher course, click the link in the description box below. Watch that video where I talk about choosing your size, cutting your pattern, and a whole lot of helpful tips, and then come back and sew along with me. Okay, let's go over the pattern pieces that you need to cut. Remember that the back of the envelope tells you exactly how many notions and what notions you need and also what fabrics are appropriate for this garment, along with yardage requirements according to your size. You're going to need pattern piece number five, which is our collar. Pattern piece number three, which is the yoke front. Pattern piece number four, which is the yoke back. Pattern piece number one, which is the bodice front. Pattern piece number two, the bodice back. You're going to need pattern piece number 10, which is our waistband. Pattern piece number six, which is our loop. Pattern piece nine, which is our pocket. Pattern piece eight, which is the pants back. And pattern piece seven, which is the pants front. Once you have everything cut out, make sure and interface two of your collars, and now we can start sewing. Now follow step one and two where it tells you exactly how to make your front darts and your back darts and then we're going to sew our side seams and put our bodice together. Okay, once you've made your darts on both your front bodice and your back bodice, you want to make sure that you also do the darts on your lining pieces, your bodice lining and your back lining as well. Now we're going to take our back and lay it right sides facing and we're going to pin and sew our sides. Make sure to align your notch. You should have a notch on the side. Now you're going to go to the machine and we're going to stitch using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. <coughs> going to sew your other side seam the same way and then press your seams open. Okay, once you have your seams pressed open, we can turn this to the right side so that the right side is facing us. And we're going to take our waistband and before we attach it, we need to fold it in half and give it a good press. So I want you to fold your waistband in half, then we're going to place it over our bodice and pin in place. Okay, once your band is folded in half, we're going to lay it on top of our bodice with the raw edge towards the edge of our bodice. And I want you to pin in place. Okay, now I want you to go ahead, take it to your sewing machine and baste across the bottom. Once you basted your waistband in place, go ahead and set this aside for just one second. And grab one front and one back pant leg. You're gonna place them right sides facing. And you're going to pin along the inner seam, just like I've done here. And we're gonna go ahead and stitch the entire inseam using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. You're going to do your other inseam the same way. Okay, so I have my inseams done and pressed to one side, and now I'm going to open my pant legs up and I'm going to lay them right sides facing. I'm going to pin first at the inseam. And 
And then I'm going to match my single notch. And my double notch. Now we're going to be sewing from the very top of our front. This is our front. This is our back. You have two notches and a single notch. We're going to sew using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance past our double notches through the crotch and we're going to stop at the dot and backstitch. Starting at the front. And we're going to stop about three inches from that single notch. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and pin and sew our pockets. So this is the front of our pants. And we're going to go ahead and lay our pockets right sides facing. You're going to align your notches. And now we're going to sew using 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, starting at the end of the pocket, we're going to stitch using 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. You're going to do the other three pockets the same way. I want you to go ahead and press your pocket so that your seam allowances are facing your pocket. And then with right sides facing, you're going to lay them over the top of each other. And we're going to pin. I'm going to continue pinning along your entire side seam. And you're going to pin both of them the same way. Then we're going to go to the sewing machine and we're going to sew using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance down until you reach your dot and you're going to backstitch and cut your thread. Then we're going to start again at the other dot, backstitch and sew the entire remaining side seam. And then we're going to go ahead and close out our pocket. Okay, I'm going to start sewing at the hem and work my way up. I'm going to sew and backstitch on my dot. And then move up to your next dot. Close our pocket. So I'm going to start here and back stitch. You're going to do the other pocket and side seam the same way. Now we're going to gather our waistline. So you're going to create two rows of gathering stitches along the back and then along the front. And I want you to go ahead and keep your pocket loose. So I don't want you to baste it and accidentally create stitches through all layers. I want you to make sure that your pocket is loose and that you're only creating your two rows of gathering stitches on your pants and not your pocket. Okay, I'm going to back stitch for the first row of stitches. And I'm going to stop when I get to my side seam. I'm going to pull my threads and start again. 
a quarter inch away from the first line of stitches. I'm going to back stitch at the beginning. And now I want to keep our pocket free, so I'm going to move my pocket towards the back. And I'm going to do the same thing, create two rows of gathering stitches along the front. Continue until you've done the entire front and the remaining back. Now go ahead and pull your gathering stitches until you have even gathers and it equals the same length as your bodice at the waistline. Now matching the center of your bodice and your front seam, we're going to go ahead and place this right sides facing and pin. Now match your side seams. Turn this around and I'm going to make sure that my gathers are even. I'm going to place my pocket towards the front. And now we're going to stitch using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Go ahead and finish your raw edge, either with your serger or your zigzag, and then press your seam towards your bodice. All right, now that we have attached our pants to our bodice and we have pressed our waistband up towards the bodice, we're gonna go ahead and attach our invisible zipper. So I'm gonna turn this to the wrong side. We're gonna baste our center back seam. So first I want to align my seam lines. Pin there. Then I'm going to align my notch. And I'm going to pin at the top. Now, where we stopped stitching before, we're going to start stitching but using a basting stitch that we're later going to remove. And I want you to baste from where we stop stitching all the way up to the top. Okay, I'm going to start sewing my basting stitch where I stopped stitching before. Press the seam open. Okay, I went ahead and switched to my, invis to my zipper foot and I'm going to place my invisible zipper 
face down. I'm going to make sure that my zipper pull is a couple of inches above so that I don't have it in the way as I'm trying to stitch. And I'm aligning the center of my zipper with my seam. And we're just going to baste this in place. And we're going to stop at our notch. I'm going to turn it over and do the same thing on the other side. Now I want you to go ahead and remove your basting stitch and open your zipper. Okay, now we're going to work on our open zipper. Now we're going to be stitching using a normal length stitch and we're going to be sewing close to the coils and using your fingernail to just pull your coils open. Now you're going to do the same thing on the other side. Now you can go ahead and close your zipper. Okay, now that we have our zipper in, we're going to go ahead and place this to the side and we're going to grab our yolks. So we have one front yoke and two for the back. And then we have the same pieces for our lining with right sides facing. I want you to pin at the shoulder. And we're going to stitch using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, we're going to back stitch at the beginning and at the end. I'm going to do the same thing to the other shoulder. I want you to press your seams open. Okay, now we're gonna work on our collar. So I went ahead and sewed my loop. You just fold it in half lengthwise. Sew using a quarter inch seam allowance and then turn it right side out. Now I'm gonna cut it in half. So I'm gonna fold it in half. And I'm gonna take my interface collar. And I'm gonna form a little loop and 5 eighths of an inch from the top where that marking is. I'm going to pin my loop. And I'm going to do the same thing again. And now I'm going to go ahead and baste this in place. Now once our loops are on, we're going to go ahead and place one non-infaced collar over the top, right sides are facing, and I'm going to pin. Now we're going to stitch across the back and down and around the bottom of our collar in a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance, leaving this part open. Mm -hmm. 
Now we're gonna go ahead and trim a little bit of this, turn it to the right side, and you're going to do your other collar the same way. Okay, now if you're going to do the collar, then before we attach our lining to our yoke, you would go ahead and pin your collar onto your yoke. So what you would do is along the center, front, you're going to pin so that your collars touch right in the center. And you're going to pin and baste around your neckline. Once you have it pinned, go ahead and baste it, and then we can continue. Okay, once you have your collar basted, we can go ahead and place our lining over our yoke and pin. Okay, now that we have it pinned, we're going to stitch down the center back, around the neck, and then on both sides. We're going to leave the bottom open on both the back and the front. Okay, we're going to be stitching using 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Make sure your collar is out of the way. Now I'm going to sew the neck. back down the center back. And you're going to do the other side and center back the same way. Okay, once we've sewn all the way around our center back, our sides, and around our neck, we can go ahead and turn this right side out. Go ahead and give this a good press, and then we'll attach our yoke to our bodice. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and pin our yoke to our bodice. So with right sides facing, go ahead and align those center notches. You should have two. And then the same goes for the back. And now we're gonna go ahead and stitch across the top and then across the back as well.
Now we'll attach our bodice lining. Okay, now that we have our yoke onto our bodice, we're gonna do our bodice lining. So I'm gonna pull my yoke back down. And with right sides facing, I'm going to match my side seams. My notches in the center front. Now we're going to stitch across the top using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Now that we're on the side, we're going to go ahead and pivot and sew down the center back. I'm going to do the other center back seam the same way. Go ahead and cut off your remaining zipper. Clip into your corners. Turn this right side out. Now give this one good press and then all you have left to do is to add buttons to the back do the hem of your pant legs and hand stitch your lining to your waistline and you are all done. Well, that's all there is to it. I hope you've enjoyed this sew along and make sure to tag me at Mimi G Style. Until next time, peace.